Hello everybody. Today we are Globular Cluster or SG227086. I am Ho Han Wing. And I am Flynn. Today we'll be presenting about our experience during the cold space competition and how we can use it for the betterment of the world and our daily lives. Our team name is Globular Cluster and our team ID is SG227086. We are made up of two members. Myself, Ho Han Wing and and I am we are from Singapore. First of all, what is the significance of our team name? The term globular cluster refers to a spherical collection of stars that are very tightly bound by gravity with a high concentration of stars towards the center. To us, each star rep represents knowledge and experience, and the cold space competition will be one of these stars adding to the total knowledge. As for programming language, I have had five years of experience in block coding, two years in syntax programming languages like C++ and Kotlin, and two years in robotics as well, like EV3, Spike Prime, and Arduino. And I have five years of experience in block coding, two years in syntax programming languages like C++ and Arduino. The category of our space rescue is post-space rescue unit. We are supposed to put our robot to collect different objects of different colors and deposit them to gain points. So for collecting objects, we need to avoid obstacles, traps, and also not go without any water. Every set of red sheen and black deposited will spawn a super object, and for every two sets deposited, there will be a super plus object to use. The strategy we use for avoiding and trying to maximize the number of super objects one. In the end, we scored a total of 1,800 points. In conclusion, we analyzed the map and came up with a strategy for the first day. We also used strategies to spawn as many super class objects as possible to increase the chance of collecting super objects. Okay, so now I would like to talk about our strategy on how to, in more in-depth, about how to spawn, uh, definitely spawn super blast objects. Firstly, to spawn as many super blast objects as possible, we will ensure that the robot will spawn one every time it deposits. We program the robot such that it can only deposit after getting six objects. This will ensure the robot will always have a super blast object every time it deposits. We create variables, advanced conditions, and advanced actions to make a counter to track the number of loaded objects of each color and so the bot knows when to stop collecting. Thus, using the variables, we program the robot such that it will, collect us, it will stop collecting a certain object once there are two of it. Hence, we can ensure the robot will only deposit after having two red, two cyan, and two black objects, uh, ensuring uh, the spawning of a super plus object. Some of our most exciting moments from the game. From the first picture, uh, this was from our first run when, and when we got 865 points, which was very high for our first run. The sec in the second run, we, we had spawned a super plus object and it collected another one, which made it very exciting for us. One example of a rescue robot, uh, water rescue. They utilize sensors like ultrasonic sensors that objects in front of them to help them navigate and also position sensors like GPS to know the exact position for a minute of the things they rescue. Another but example is of quick rescue bots. We can incorporate pathfinding to find the shortest route that the robot has to take in order to find the victim fast, just like in the in the just like the cold space rescue technique to collect uh, many super plus objects. We could also incorporate elements like machine learning so that the robot over time knows not to go to areas that are obvious which will uh, they will obviously slow it down and get it stuck just like in the swamlands or trapped in the in cold space rescue. Thank you all for listening to our presentation.